Hello, peoples of the internet. So today, er, for the past several days actually, we are making my Halloween costume. Er, I have making my Halloween costume. Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Exhibit every friggin' else. My entire room, which is covered in crafting crap. But yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna see the processing. Shoot, I just realized that I got paint on my desk. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so, I've already made my Halloween costume, I kind of might have accidentally deleted the old intro, because I'm a dumb, but yeah, um, so, uh, uh, here is what I've been wanting to do for Halloween. It's actually a bit inspired by the uh, concept of the Battle Angels in Pirate 101, uh, here's a little picture on screen for ya, uh, so... This originally was going to be a doll design, and I'm still doing this as a doll someday. I just, like, haven't gotten to it yet, because, jeez, I've been swamped, but... Or, yeah, that is a character of mine, Knight, a sort of malfunctioning battle angel, I guess you could say. And I'm planning on making her as a doll one day soon. But, uh, in the meantime, I decided to turn this into a costume, because I figured it'd be pretty freaking cool. Like, I can make something really, really great. And, yeah. So, I've already planned it out some, and, like, I've already made it too, actually. What the heck am I saying? <laughs> but, yeah, here's some of the planning out that I made. Really freaking basic. But, yeah, whenever you see all the labels and measurements and crap, you know this is gonna get interesting. So, yeah, time to make a freaking costume. Er, time to show you how I made a freaking costume. Woo! Okay, so... First, I start with the cage skirt. This felt so easy, yet so hard. I started off with what will be the horizontal pieces. Uh, here's the planning sketch again, so you can see what I mean. Uh, I planned on using this thick ribbon for the horizontal pieces, and attaching them to these fake leather vertical straps. I, uh, I sewed the sides of the ribbon together and turned them inside out. That was a lot of work. Uh, and, and like, I threaded some wire through them. And, yeah, plastic tubes, thread wire through. And after that, I, uh, I was planning on using that so I could have some, um, horizontal pieces that were actually kind of bendable and could keep a good shape for the rest of the skirt. But yeah, after that, I started on the belt that this would all attach to. All I really did for that was making this long leather strip fabric tube thing, kind of like the ribbons, and shaping it and sewing it for or something that looked like a belt. I didn't really follow any patterns for any of this, kind of just went off a few measurements and went kind of crazy. Uh, anyways, after the belt was made, I cut the vertical leather, leather straps and I made some markings on the inside of the fabric to tell me where things go. After that, all it really was was following the instructions I set out for myself. And boy did that take a while! <laughs> I actually tried to get this thing done before a youth group later that night, because I don't know, I wanted to wear a cage skirt to youth group. Do not judge me. Unfortunately, I didn't get it finished by then, but I did later that night after a ton of sewing by hand. Surprisingly, this all together came out pretty great. Uh, I guess all that practice from sewing doll clothes was starting to help. <laughs> My only regret was not, not getting some wire that was a bit thicker, because the cage skirt probably would have been less shaky and ha have had an easier time keeping a good shape. Making the weapons was basically just a bunch of painting. I figured that modifying plastic props would be a lot less time consuming than trying to make my own. I, uh, I used a revolver from a cowboy costume kit and a plastic sword. Both of them were from Walmart, though. I uh, kind of wish I could have found something a bit thinner and more pointed for the sword. Maybe less curved, but that the, that was the closest to what I wanted that I could find. Um, I considered trying to sand it to make it a bit more pointy, but I figured that wouldn't work out so well. This thing was hollow and made out of thin plastic. Uh, I worked with that. I worked with what I had, though. I lined up the blade made with the sword some, and I did a bit of dry brushing for some detail, then hot glued on some leftover leather from the skirt, since I figured that'd be good for the handle. I also tried to make the blade look shinier by adding some glossy Mod Podge. I, uh, I did a base coat of white for the pistol, 
since the orange would otherwise really, really stand out. I did a base coat of white for the pistol and tried to make it look kind of silver with a wooden grip. It took a freaking lot of work, especially since some nooks and crannies just didn't want to dry, dude. I managed, though. I tried to use some dry brushing here, too. I wanted to make it obvious that this thing was fake. The orange piece at the end of the barrel was kind of meant to do that, but it looked kind of weird. I figured instead I could try to give it some kind of glow. Maybe like it's about to fire some kind of magic. Obviously fake, but not quite as weird looking. I mean, still came out a bit weird, but not that weird. <laughs> Additionally, I glued on some more fake gears for a more steampunk vibe. Don't know why, but my phone kind of freaked out while recording that part, though. But hey, you'll see the result later. I, uh, I tried to be careful with the gear placement, and I tried to make it look like each gear had a purpose and didn't interfere with the functions of an actual revolver. Like the sights needing to be clear and the chamber needing to be able to independently move. It's not like it's actually a functional pistol though. But hey, believability. So when doing the helmet and the wings, I was especially crunched on time. Me and my cousins usually go to this local safe trick-or-treat held in my town along with normal trick-or-treating a few days later. Only thing is, it was a day earlier than I was expecting. And I needed that day. So yeah! Time crunch. Anyways, the helmet. I wanted to make the, one of those kind of poofy things you'd see on a knight's hat, except kind of different. So I cut down an empty spool for size, uh, I painted it to try to match the helmet colors, and uh, I glued some pieces of a wig to the inside, because I figured that that would look cool. Uh, I, attached it, I attached this little amalgamation to the top, and hey, it looked pretty good. I also added some black fabric hanging down from the sides in the back of the helmet. It looks good, plus I kind of wanted to have the least skin showing possible. Kind of makes me look less human, I guess. Gives off a less human-y vibe. Speaking of less human, I also painted some cracks on my mask. Just to make it look a little bit more interesting. These were a lot of work. First, I had to sand down the pieces for the wings that me and my mom got at Lowe's. That took a while. I had this plan for the wings inspired off of this one video. I'll uh, link it below. I wanted to make it a bit different though and add a bit of an alteration to that design. An extra piece of wood extending off of each of the top pieces. I don't know, I figured it'd make the design a little bit more interesting. Anyways, after all that freaking sanding, there was drilling the holes. That isn't pictured on camera. My mom had to help me with that. Anyways, uh, that took me a while. Especially since I messed up. Twice. <laughs> Afterwards, it was just a matter of putting all the nuts and bolts together with the pieces. I just realized I said that backwards, putting all the pieces together with the nuts and bolts. Um, I eventually decided to leave out my little wing modification, though. Because it was a little bit too limiting on articulation, and I felt like the entire reason that I made them the way I did was so they'd have plenty of movement. Like, that piece I added was basically taking away the entire purpose of making the thing. <laughs> um, after, er, after I took away that piece, though, I extended the wings as far out as they could go, and I cut some fabric pieces for each side based off of that. I also went ahead and made some straps for the wings, kind of like that of the backpack. After all that and being extremely crunched on time, though, time to finally put it to work. So I donned my outfit, along with all the crap I made... And it slowly broke apart the first time I wore it. Hey, hey, it's okay, though. After some more sturdier repairs and a little bit of altering to the straps on the wings, much better. This costume was a journey creating. It was fun and interesting, but wow, was it also stressful. I'm not a cosplay channel, though, thankfully. So if y'all want to see more of my art and any other possibly rush crap I take on, then you can check out my Twitter or my Instagram. Or I tend to be a bit more active. Anyways, see you next time. I'm not doing this again for a while. Adios!